Hey, what is going on, everybody? It is your boy Hobo back again. It has been two weeks of NFL football. We are moving right along through the NFL season, and holy cow, what a uh, what a week two! What a week two it was. But I'm more concerned with the aftermath of everything that happened in week two. So Drew Brees went down. He's hurt out for likely eight weeks minimum. Ben Roethlisberger done for the season. Eli Manning benched. It's just it's it's been a crazy week, you know. And uh, well, there's nothing left to do but play football, especially football tonight when we kick off on Thursday night football at 8:20 p.m. It will be the Tennessee Titans visiting the Jacksonville Jaguars. Titans are one and one. Jags 0 and two. And obviously the Jaguars are without Nick Foles, but they have the swaggiest man in all of professional f sports for this matter, Gardner Minshew. And Gardner Minshew has played some really good football coming in relief of Nick Foles. And, you know, I'm not really happy with the inconsistency I, get, I see from the Tennessee Titans. Like, they obliterated the Cleveland Browns uh, in week one, and then they come out and they have really a kind of, I don't want to use the word abysmal, but they had an abysmal performance against the Colts, a team they really could have and should have beaten. And I, I, I got to pick the Jaguars. They're just, to me anyway, the much better unit. I know Jalen Ramsey wants out of town. The Chiefs are talking to him, the Raiders, the Seahawks. A couple of the teams like that are trying to, the Eagles, which would suck. But yeah, a couple of teams are talking to Jalen Ramsey. If anything happens, it'll come tomorrow. So if, if, if you're an NFL football fan and you're paying attention to this situation as it unfolds, pay attention to Friday because I, I reckon Jalen Ramsey will be traded on Friday if he is traded at all. But I'm going to pick the Jaguars in this game. I like Gardner Minshew's swagger. I don't think the Titans really have the moxie to go blow for blow with this division rival, especially when they've got Leonard Fournette. I think Fournette's going to have a nice game. Uh, Jaguars going to open it up, get their first win, and end the Titans' four-game winning streak. So next, we will go to Sunday on the 22nd, 1 p.m., the Detroit Lions at 1-0-1, visiting the Philadelphia Eagles at 1-1. So, the Eagles on Sunday night, they looked all over the place, and I know, you know, everybody was hurt, and Carson Wentz was hurt. And, and this, that, and the other. But still, I mean, you got to get next man up mentality. you got to find ways to win football games. And, the, you know, the fact of the matter is they didn't. They failed. They lost to uh, Atlanta. Atlanta played a much better game. Well, not much better game. I mean, Matt Ryan threw three interceptions. But they still they played the better, the better game. They have the better weapons. Obviously, when you go compare receiver for receiver, and the opposing side has Julio Jones. You are not typically going to win that battle. But the Lions, on the other hand, what a weird, weird, weird team. Uh, <laughs> you know, they came out and they got beaten. They're not beaten, but they tied with the Arizona Cardinals in week one. And then they come out and against a Charger team that I had making a deep playoff run. They come out and they beat them. And I'm like, there's absolutely no consistency between weeks one and weeks two for the Detroit Lions. I don't like that. Uh, and, and I know the Eagles have, have done much of the same, but at, at least their inconsistency faltered in the sense that in both first halves of their games this year, they played bad. But the inconsistency came when in the second half of week two, they didn't wake up. And you know, all you're really going to need, I think, if you're Philadelphia, is a strong strong start to this game. I think they'll get that, and I think they'll get the win on Sunday. Next up, 9-22, 1 p.m. Obviously, it's 9-22 because it is September 22nd. It is the New York Jets at 0-2 visiting the New England Patriots. So, this one's going to be fun. I was in the building on Monday night there to watch the Browns play the Jets. And I just got to say, from what I saw, obviously the Jets have a lot of, of quarterback problems, but from what I saw defensively, 
you know, they didn't play terrible football, and even thusly, they got some of their defensive starters in the secondary benched, including Jamal Adams, and that's just quizzical to me. Like, I don't get what Adam Gase's goal is putting his, his, his great starters on the bench. But I guess when you're getting destroyed by the Cleveland Browns, who just the week prior got destroyed themselves, there's really no sample size for you to to go off of. I, I don't. I just. I still. I don't get the. I don't. I don't get the decision. But the Patriots, they have what a plus 75 turnover differential, or not turnover differential. That'd be insane. A plus 75 point margin. They've outscored teams like 75 to three or something like that. Like. Like what? Or 78 to three, whatever it would be. But, but still, I mean, that's just in intense. That team is so unbelievably good. It's it's hard not to pick them, and especially with the Jets, you know, right there on the bottom. Madden thinks that the Patriots are going to win, but only by three. I think the Patriots not only do they win this game, but oh boy, Luke Falk has his work cut out for him. The poor. Poor kids. Simeon's not going to play, and obviously Darnold's out with mono. So, poor kid from Wazoo, Gardner Minshew. I'm sure he's got some words of encouragement for his former Wazoo buddy. I don't even know if they played there together, but Luke Falk, poor guy, going to go in there, and he's going to have a rough, rough game. Patriots coming out with a win. Then the Raiders will visit the Vikings. Both of these groups are 1-1. One and one. Raiders, okay. Um... What is there to say about the Oakland Raiders? You know, they're just a, 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 a weird... <laughs> See, that, and like this is such a weird season because everybody's playing weird. Some of your teams are excelling because you knew they would. Some of your teams are underperforming because you knew they would. But pretty much every team in the middle, they're being really weird. And I don't know <laughs> any other way to describe it. But the Raiders got that nice win against Denver on Monday night to open the season. They obviously got a win last week. Off the top of my head... I cannot remember for the life of me who they played, but, <laughs> and I feel really bad admitting that. But either way, the Vikings, on the other hand, they beat Atlanta week one soundly, and then Aaron Rodgers came to town, and that was pretty much all she wrote. And you know, I I want to pick the Raiders in this game. I honestly do. I don't. I didn't think that I saw enough from Minnesota when they were down 21 to nothing against Green Bay. They saw a defense that really throttled off because they knew they had this game in hand. And, and I mean, really, you shouldn't do that in the National Football League, but they did nonetheless. Still, I'm going I'm to, yeah, I'm going to take the Raiders. I like Carr. You know, I, I like uh, whoever else. <laughs> I like Tyrell Williams. I like Josh Jacobs. That defense, they're young. They're going to get better. Um, and I think this is a great test for them in Minnesota. Get a big road win. I'm picking the Raiders. Ravens and Chiefs, both 2-0 teams. This is my game of the week. Holy moly, Lamar Jackson has lit the league absolutely on fire. And Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> through uh, you know sheer God-given talent, has dominated the league. He is the current league leader in passing by, what is it, I believe 200 yards or so? That's ridiculous. These, th th these two teams are making playoff runs in the AFC. It's just a matter of how deep. I feel like it's a toss-up, you know, with one of these teams is going to be in the AFC Championship game, I feel. If not both of them, you know, that, that would be fun. But this is going to be a fantastic game. And, you know, I know that uh, the Chiefs, they've taken some hits, you know, in the injury department. They're not healthy. You know, Tyreek Hill is going to miss this game. But Sammy Watkins has come absolutely out of his shell. And, you know... Travis Kelsey hasn't really been leaned on very much. So if you get Kelsey in the game plan and, and you're still throwing to uh, to Sammy Watkins, you've got a great recipe for a win. And I feel like they're going to be able to do such a thing. And I'm picking the Kansas City Chiefs to beat the Baltimore Ravens. Excuse my yawn. The Baltimore Ravens. There we go. Um, yeah, but that, I mean that's going to be a fun game. Game of the week. Probably going to be 80 points total combined score. That's my my guess. I mean, these the two defenses are they're pretty average, you know. So they're not going to be. It's going to be like the Ch the Chiefs and the Rams on Monday night last year. Going to be an awesome game. Oh, Dexter Lawrence with a pick. Good job. Um, the Atlanta Falcons at one and one versus the Indianapolis Colts at one and one. 
I like the Colts in this game. I know the Falcons just got a win, but now they're going on the road. Uh, Jacoby Brissett is going to be under his own roof at Lucas Oil Stadium. You know, I like the fact that the offense for Indianapolis hasn't looked all too bad. And, that I mean, they went blow for blow with the Chargers. And then they even threw Adam Vinatieri struggles one last week. So, they're, to me, just a, a more solid football team than the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons have a lot of problems on defense. And outside of, you know, the wide receivers on offense, I don't know who's running the football for them, really. Like, get, uh, give me an honest answer. I don't know who's running the football for them. Effectively, anyway. And Matt Ryan has not played his best football. That is quite apparent. He is a far cry from his MVP season. So I'm going to pick the Colts in this game. I, uh, I, I, I like them a lot. You know, I, I like Jacoby Brissett. And the Tom Brady quarterback tree, Brissett, Garoppolo, and uh, Briss Brady. Yeah, Brady, Garoppolo, Brissett. There it is. They're 5-1 and one through three weeks. They're going to extend that a little bit further to ooh, it would be like 7-1 and one if I don't pick the 49ers later. But you'll have to wait and see if I do. Denver Broncos, Green Bay Packers, 0-2 oh versus 2-0. and oh. Joe Flacco has looked so lackadaisical. And so uninterested in playing football for the Denver Broncos. <laughs> it's it's really unreal to me. He just he does not look like a guy who gives a shit. It looks like he's just standing in there waiting for them to call Drew Locke and, and throw him in to the Wolves. But I, I'm going to pick Green Bay. I just, I... Obviously, everyone knows I love the Green Bay Packers. I wear my Aaron Rodgers jersey all the time. I'm absolutely in love with him. I love out Al Geronimo Allison, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, Devontae Adams, Jimmy Graham, uh, you know, Aaron Jones, and that defense, those linebackers. That, te that team is going to be serious in the NFC. It really is. And I'm so happy to see Matt LaFleur in, in that, that front office finally put together a team that, at least on paper and through two weeks, has looked capable of bringing Aaron Rodgers back to postseason success. Because the poor guy has not had a team around him to get him into these great positions. So I'm very pleased to see the Packers playing a good brand of football. And uh, I think they're going to come out with a huge, huge win. Once you get to 3-0, I mean, it's, it's really hard to miss the playoffs from 3-0. So I like the Packers in this game. Dolphins, Cowboys, make if Fitzpatrick just got traded. If they stick with with Ryan Fitzpatrick, this game is going to be even a worse blowout. But if they go to Rosen, they might have a better chance of making it a 20-point game instead of a 40-point game. I mean, the, the Cowboys, the proof is in the pudding, as much as I hate to admit it. Dak Prescott is the fourth, I believe he's fourth on uh, passing yardage so far this season. And there's a reason for that, I mean... Uh, Kellen Moore, their offensive coordinator, has done a wonderful job creating great plays and putting Dak in situations, you know, where he's going to have great looks against against coverage, you know. And, and Dak's made the the big jumps that I thought he wasn't capable of making and being able to read defenses and pick them apart, make his line adjustments, his blocking adjustments, and get guys in the right position to throw, you know, for 400 yards a game. And as much as I hate to say it because I am a Giants fan, I'm a football fan first, Giants fan second. They're playing a, a really good brand of football right now. And they, the, the Dallas Cowboys, like it or not, are going to be a fun team to watch just because of their ability to score. And that's what people really like now in the NFL is a lot of points. So if you like watching points, watch this game. Because I have a feeling the Dolphins might get zipped again. I'm going with the Cowboys. Bengals, Bills. Bengals are 0-2, even though Andy Dalton is playing his ass off. Poor, poor team. And Josh Allen has ruled New York. I'm going to go with the Bills, just because I, I watched that game last week against the Giants. Obviously, it's the Giants' defense. But I like the uh, the steps he's taking to become a better quarterback. You know, his reads are getting sharper. He's, a, <clears throat> he's able to, you know, roll out of the pocket, be accurate on the run. And not just throw into coverage, you know. That's the big thing with young quarterbacks like Josh Allen who tend to run and get outside of the pocket. 
they lean on their ability to do that so much. They try to make a play. They, they throw interceptions. But Josh Allen was beautiful on Sunday. And he still managed to run in for a touchdown. So I, I, I got the Bills in this game. I mean, the Bengals, they're, they're going to be a rough unit for a while. And if you're a Bengals fan, I mean, just, just don't hold out hope, you know. But Andy Dalton's only got a couple more years left. They need to do something if they want to try with the, with the great quarterback they have. <clears throat> Not necessarily a great quarterback, just to backpedal on my statement before anybody, you know, lights me on fire. But a really good quarterback in Andy Dalton. they got, they got to capitalize on what he has more than they have. And the Giants-Buccaneers, a game you're watching right now. Okay. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. For my entire life, I've been alive for 20 years. Eli Manning has been the New York Giants starter for 16 years. Not a single point in my life that I can legitimately recall on with actual memories was Eli Manning not the starting quarterback of my favorite team in the, in the league, the New York Giants. And we don't talk about what happened in 2017 against against Oakland because that was stupid that doesn't that doesn't count I mean it counts but it doesn't count but for 16 straight years that was the guy I watched you know that was the guy I saw as a as a kid and as a teenager win my favorite football team two Super Bowls and when I was a kid I didn't know football the way I know it now so obviously everybody likes to say it was two lucky throws. The defense carried him. What I saw was Eli Manning. What I saw was the best quarterback in Giants history. What I saw was a guy who threw adversity, made the best of every situation, and never complained about it. He did the best in his ability every year for 16 years to put his, pos his team in a position to win. Irregardless of how many interceptions he threw, he would always come back and keep throwing. He did everything in his power, you know, with his talent that he has to win football games. And I am so proud and, and honored to have watched number 10 suit up for the New York Giants for 16 straight years. There's no one else I'd rather have at quarterback playing for the Giants. And, and that's just like you could say, well, if you could trade Brady for Eli straight up right now. No. No. I want it. There's no other human being that plays the position of quarterback in professional football that I would rather have on my team than Eli Manning. Consummate professional. He will go into the Hall of Fame. One of the greatest people to ever play the sport. A good man. A good football player. A champion. I just... You know, it's it's been tough, and I haven't I haven't even sat down yet since the announcement came about Daniel Jones to corroborate my thoughts, you know, and, and really think about how I felt about this whole thing. And it's it's a lot of stunned shock when you think about it because I was four years old when Eli Manning took over as the head football quarterback of the New York Football Giants. When he took over, I was four years old. I've spent my entire life watching him play football. And it really has been an honor to watch him suit up. Just one of, the, one of those guys you know that when you have him on your football team, you have a chance to win. Any Sunday, he's out there. You have a chance to win a football game. But nothing obviously was ever guaranteed with old Eli. The dumb bastard likes to throw interceptions. He likes to fumble. But God damn it, if he wasn't the toughest son of a bitch on a football field. He would take every hit you threw at him and he would get up, fix his shoulder pads, put his helmet back on straight, and continue to play football. New York Giants football. I still, you know, can recall the memory of him playing the New York Jets, getting popped in the mouth, his forehead's bleeding. He checks back into the game. Dude is an animal. There's, you know, all the, all the, uh, the pictures of him against San Francisco in the NFC Championship game, where his jersey's pulled off, and, and you know, his, his 
Helmet's half off his head. <laughs> then dude went and won a Super Bowl. Well, he did in Super Bowl 42 against the New England Patriots with David Tyree. Regardless of what people think about it, the luckiest throw ever. It was all David Tyree. You know, Rodney Harrison was whatever, whatever. It was the greatest play in Super Bowl history. And Eli Manning was a two-time Super Bowl champion. Now, a two-time Super Bowl MVP. Think about it. Really honestly think about it. How many other guys can tell you, or can you look at and say they were a two-time Super Bowl MVP? Not even his own brother, Peyton Manning, is a two-time Super Bowl MVP. Eli Manning is. But now, there is a changing of the guard. An inevitability that I knew was going to happen. I was preaching for it, and then when it happened, I was shocked. But it's Daniel Jones' time to run this offense. It took two games, two very average or subpar performances from Eli Manning and the change was made so now we're rolling with Daniel Jones and I'm all for it I wish the kid nothing but success and I hope that he even has half of the career Eli Manning had with this team because if he did he'll be a Super Bowl champion but obviously those are lofty expectations for a rookie but this is the New York market the pressure's on him us New York Giants fans we have a certain expectation for a football team that hasn't been met in five years really you can even say that hasn't been met in six or seven years and now it's it's up to Daniel Jones to start writing this ship you know when Eli Manning took over Kurt Warner was a starter but they still had hopes of making the playoffs and they made the change now this is a team that isn't a playoff contender and yet they made the change so I think it's the best possible thing they could have done for Daniel Jones. You evaluate him for 14 weeks. If he doesn't do well, you draft another quarterback and kick him to the curb. But it's it's Daniel Jones' time now. It's his team, and I'm all for it. I am so happy for Daniel Jones, and I hope he comes out against Tampa Bay and he beats them to a pulp. But that being said, Jameis Winston, uh, he looked decent on, on Thursday night, but that defense looked really good. And I don't know if it was just a combination of how bad, you know, the Panthers are. But they, they played good, you know, all things considered. So I'm going to pick strongly and confidently the New York Giants. I think there's not any tape the Buccaneers can use against Daniel Jones. He's going to come out, and I think that he has just natural ability, and I think he's going he's gonna to give this team a great chance to win, put up some points. And then I hope, and I think he will, eventually win this football game. So after that diatribe, we are uh, talking about the Panthers and the Cardinals. Panthers are 0-2, Cardinals are 0-1-1. I like Kyler Murray in this game. Uh, I don't think Cam Newton's going to play. So I'm picking Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. Next up is the Steelers, the 49ers. No Ben Roethlisberger. Jimmy Garoppolo is on fire. That defense is on fire. And I, I'm sorry for you know rushing through these couple of predictions here, but you know I, I gotta, gotta hurry it up now that I spent so long on the Giants. But I'm picking the 49ers. I think they'll roll to roll to three and zero and continue to fly under the radar as one of the better teams in the NFC. Next up, the Saints and the Seahawks. Saints are one and one. No Drew Brees. Seahawks are two and zero. Teddy Bridgewater. I'd like to say he's going to come out and have a, a nice game for himself. Uh, and, I, and I think he will, but I don't think it's going to be enough, you know, to, to come out and, and beat the Seattle Seahawks. So I'm picking the Seahawks, and I'm picking Russell Wilson. So, uh, yeah, they're my pick. <laughs> Next up, the Texans and the Chargers. Both teams are 1-1. One one. This is going to be a fun game, but, I, you know, I'm going to pick the Texans. I just didn't like what I saw out of the offense last week from from uh, LA but you know Carlos Hyde there I believe that's who they have running the football in, in Houston he's like the fifth leading rusher in the league so I'm pretty confident they'll be able to run the clock make some first downs get some things moving and get Deshaun Watson going so I'm picking the Texans 
8-20, Sunday Night Football, Rams, Browns. Oh, boy. You know, the Browns won Sunday night or uh, Monday Night Football, excuse me, on Monday. And now they're coming around on Sunday, and they have to take on the Rams. I don't honestly think the Cleveland Browns have the firepower to match the the uh, L.A. Rams, especially because this new offense is still being installed, and Baker Mayfield still, you know, is playing kind of eh, wishy-washy. So I'm I'm gonna pick the uh, I'm gonna pick the Rams in this game. I like them better on both sides of the football, and I think Jared Goff is really gonna start showing people that he's not just you know Sean McVay playing Madden he is an actual quarterback with skill so I'm gonna go with the Rams the Monday Night Football the Chicago Bears at 1-1 against the Washington Redskins at 0-2 so I don't know why they decide to put the Redskins on primetime football because that's not primetime yet here we are so uh, the Bears are the Bears that defense is crazy good however you know I'm not sold on the offense I'm not sold on Mitchell Trubisky at this point however I think it's gonna be good enough you know I don't think uh, Case Keenum there is gonna have enough juice to get past this defense you know unless they make the switch to like Dwayne Haskins and if that happens you know like at halftime or something they bring Haskins in they have a good chance to win because I think that kid has ability but I'm gonna go with the Chicago Bears in this game I just I think they, uh, they're the better team. Obviously the better defense. I don't think that's a question. But, I'm, yeah, I'm going to take the Bears and I'm going to take them confidently. So there you have it. I don't know how long this video went, but damn it, I need a drink and I need to go to the bathroom. So I'm getting out of here. Hope that you guys enjoy some football tonight and throughout the weekend. That's going to do it for me, your boy Hobo, and I'll catch each and every one of you guys next week for Week 4 Predictions.